Hey there, good morning. It is eight o'clock in the morning on Friday and I'm really trying to make sure that I'm able to film a video today. I've been wanting to film, I just haven't had the damn time to do so. It has been a little chaotic this week. Uh, it's been a little chaotic since I started filming again, but one thing's for certain, this is what I want to be doing. I want to be sharing with you guys what's going on. It's been so much of a feeling of after business show. That whole idea that I had mentioned here on after prison show being a series. But before I go any further, uh, one thing that I absolutely want to mention is just a major thank you. I cannot emphasize enough how good it feels that you know, you guys have welcomed me back the way that you have. I could have never imagined that me filming the video after six months of not doing anything video wise, that I would upload that video and share it with all of you and be welcomed back in such a way that I was. There were so many nice, sincere, meaningful comments that I read on that video. And I am just so absolutely blown away, humbled and grateful for all of you still wanting to rock with me. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. I cannot put into words exactly what that has meant to me, uh, especially in times like these when it has been absolutely tough. I wonder how it's probably screwing up the look here with that light in the background. Okay, so <clears throat> I didn't want to film in the van and I got a, a lot of stuff going on today, ironically, which, you know, I say ironically because as of late, we really haven't had too much going on. But all of a sudden today, we do have a bunch of work. There is so much that I want to share with you guys about what has been going on. I don't want to bore you to death. I've got so many stories to share with you about just us losing all of the work that we have had and then me attempting to rebuild this business, going out, talking to new properties, hearing outrageous prices that these people wanna to pay to get painting work done. And man, it has been a wild ride. Um, I wanna start with one story first. And again, like I said, there's so much that I wanna share with you guys today. So, we had one property, actually two properties, that were really good to us. We did work for those properties for over two years. We were always there when they needed us. We always got everything done that they needed. One property we were doing color changes in, those are very extensive paint jobs that require a shit ton of work. Those units were massive. Um, <clears throat> and we were able to get those units done in a day and maybe a little bit the next morning, maybe till like nine, 10 o'clock at the latest. And nobody had come in there and was able to do those units any faster than we were. In fact, over the course of the two and a half years that we worked there, you know, they did bring in other painters to try them out. One guy I can remember specifically, it took him a week to get one unit done, a color change. It was a two bedroom. It wasn't even that big of a unit. It took this guy one week to get that unit done. Well, back in January, I would be told that they were bringing in another painter. And in fact, the reason why they were bringing this guy in is because he was way cheaper than I was. Uh, now to put into perspective what I was charging at this property, for a one bedroom color change, I was charging 750. For a two bedroom, I was charging 850. For a three bedroom, I was charging 950. And for a two story, two bedroom, which is 13 or 1400 square feet, I was charging 1150. That particular unit was about the size of a house. Now, they tell me there's this new guy who's coming in and he's willing to do any color change, any size unit for $750 across the board. I said, there's no way that I can match that. Uh, and honestly, I hope it doesn't work out because I really wanna keep this property. Well, the month of January would play out and into February would play out. And especially in February, we were only getting a handful of units, maybe like five throughout the course of the month. In January, we might've gotten like eight. And in December, we might've gotten like eight as well. So they really were, 
not giving us that many units, and maybe they didn't have that many units, it, it is supposedly slow at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. Uh, so in February, I would ask some of the other maintenance guys at this property, hey, what's going on with this new painter? How's he working out? And they would tell me verbatim, like shit. They said, it's taking this guy three days to do a unit. He shows up when he wants to show up. It's him and a helper. We're walking to the unit. He ain't even doing anything. And I said, well, that's great news for me because maybe, you know, that means that they're going to come back to us and want to continue to use us for paint. Well, at the end of February, I would ask the, the main maintenance man. I said, hey, we're going to get a schedule for March, right? And he says, no. Uh, they're not going to use you anymore. They're going to go with the other guy. I said, they're going to go with the other guy? I said, it's taking him three days to get a unit done. You guys have a five-day turn schedule, which means from the time that somebody moves out, the unit has to be ready to be re-rented within five days. And he tells them, he says, yeah, you know, they don't really care about that anymore. I said, oh, that's ironic. Because for two and a half years, we've killed ourselves at this property you know, trying to make sure that we're getting these things done in, in as close to one day as possible. Sometimes doing two or three units, full color changes in a day. He says, yeah, you know, they don't really care about that anymore. They're just going to push everything back and, you know, let him go in there and do his thing. So we lose that property and that was a real gut punch to me. Earlier this week, I would get a phone call from that property and I'm like, yes, they're coming back. Uh, I get a phone call at three o'clock in the afternoon, maybe it's Tuesday or Wednesday. And the guy says to me, he says, hey, where are you at? I say, uh, what do you mean, where am I at? He says, you had two units to paint over here today. I said, no, I didn't. You told me we weren't getting a schedule for March. He says, well, I gave you these units at the beginning of February. I said, dude, you told me, you know, we weren't getting a schedule for March. I didn't even put those on my schedule. I figured you were going with the other guy. He says, well, I just wanted to see if you were going to show up. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of shit is that? And then he says, but maybe I should have called you earlier today. I said, dude, if you would have called me earlier today, I would have definitely got some guys out there because we don't got no work. And um, needless to say, we would go out there the next day, we painted those two units, and it was really depressing painting those two units, knowing that those were our last units out there, knowing that no matter how hard we tried and how good of a job we did, it didn't matter because at the end of the day, all that mattered was the price. But we did it, and I went back the next day to pick up my ladders, uh, and I saw this guy, and he asked me, he says, hey man, you okay? And I'm like, yeah. And he's sitting there like he's anticipating that I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. And I'm not gonna lie, I want to. But all I say is, hey man, you know, y'all will call us back. He says, oh yeah? I said, yeah, you'll, you'll call us back. And at this point, I really wanna just say, you know, it's messed up the way you did us out here. We bent over backwards, but I catch myself before I go any further with that. And I just tell him, I said, you know what? Good luck to y'all out here. Try to keep it as professional as possible. Uh, sometimes it doesn't matter what you do or how hard you try or how good you do. In the construction industry, I'm not really sure that painting is a part of that. I guess it is. Um, you know, it is cutthroat. It is <laughs> pricing. Uh, that's one part of this story that I want to share with you guys. Let me get to another unit. We, uh, we got a couple of things going on today, like I said, ironically and honestly, miraculously. So let me go check out another unit. I'm going to share with you in a little bit uh, some more of this particular story. It's always nice when you find paint in the unit. All right, anyways, I'm in another unit and it's kind of important me filming from here and I'm gonna share why in just a moment. So that was basically how one of our last properties uh, ended things with us. It looks a little foggy on that lens. And forgive me for filming on my phone. 
I don't really want to be lugging the camera around, even though I have it with me. Um, so yeah, that was how things ended at one of our last properties. We were really left at that point with like one other property. And at that other property, that's another one that we had worked for for about two and a half years. And we've done a shit ton of work with them, always available when they need us. They can call us last minute, we're always there. Well, over the course of the last few months with that particular property, they've also been giving us way less units. Even during the slow months, you know, we would still average about 10 units a month at this property that I'm talking about. Well, uh, maybe starting back in December, we had uh, like five units. And then in January, we had like five units. And then in, um, in February, we had like four units. And then in March, we had three units. And I was really feeling slighted uh, by this and not even knowing that they had brought in another painter I had assumed that they had done so because you know, this is a massive property over 400 units at this property They've got a pretty high turnover uh, Out there. So I knew they brought in another painter at some point over the course of the last three months I had asked the maintenance guy out there. I said hey uh, Just on a whim. How's that other painter working out for you? and he said good. I said, man, I said, that's messed up. Y'all brought in another painter. I said, he's obviously got to be cheaper than us. And, you know, we've always been there for you, this and that. And he tells me, he says, hey, man, it's company policy. Now we have to keep two painters. I said, okay. I said, but at least, you know, split the units up with us. And he says, I am. He was like, I only had eight units this month. I gave you four and I gave him four. And I said, okay, you know, Okay, so to put this into perspective a little bit more for you, at this particular property, this is just the standard repaint. Very rarely do we ever do a color change over there, but sometimes we do you know, really messed up units that require a lot of work. And those units that take a lot of work, it's a lot of drywall repairs, it's a lot of priming. Um, you know, we could be in there for upwards of three days in some of those units, but to put it into perspective, at that property and like so many other properties that we've worked with just doing standard repaints, our price, bear with me, this is going to sound crazy, was $350 for a one bedroom, $400 for a two bedroom, and $450 for a three bedroom. And I know that you're thinking, oh my God, Joe, that is insane. No wonder your business has failed. No wonder, you know, all of this, that pricing is ridiculous. It should be way higher than that. And you're absolutely right. The problem is, is these properties are not willing to pay more than that at all. And to be honest with you, 350, 400, and 450 for a one, two, and a three bedroom was already higher than what everybody else is charging. And in fact, what it seems like everybody else is charging is anywhere between 250 to 275 for a one bedroom, 300 for a two bedroom, and 350 for a three bedroom. I've had properties tell me that we're $100 more than what they're paying. And our philosophy was always well, or our justification was always, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, you're paying us this already unbelievably low price, but if you're telling me it's higher than what everybody else is charging, you know, you're going to get a higher quality of work. And sure as shit, that's what we've always tried to provide. But it doesn't matter. Quality means nothing in this in comparison to pricing when it comes to apartment painting. And also, I've seen this as well with residential. The only difference between apartments and residential is I thought the police were coming for me. Um, the only difference between residential and, and the apartment world is, is that in residential, people want the cheapest, but still expect the most. Actually, I shouldn't even say that because, you know, that is pretty much the same with apartments as well. Um, you know, it seems like most everybody just wants the cheapest guy. But to continue with the story, the point 
that I'm trying to get to here is, you know, for the month of March, we were only given three units to paint at this last property that we had. I was pissed because I knew they had more than three units going, but you know what? We were going to handle those units. And we had already done one. And as a matter of fact, we had another one scheduled for today. We're not painting that unit today. And the reason is, um, is because I ended up getting into it with the, the property manager uh, on a phone call yesterday. And I tried like all hell to not let it get to that point. Um, but this particular property manager has always been I hate to say it like this, a pain in the ass. She has a very nasty attitude. She has always treated me personally like shit. I can go into the office and everything is always our fault, no matter if it's you know genuinely her fault, if she scheduled something wrong or if you know something gets mixed up. I'm not saying every time it was her fault, but anytime that it was her fault, it was still always my fault. Well, the situation that played out yesterday was actually her fault. The day before yesterday, I reached out to her about an invoice that was submitted back in January that should have already been paid. And I'm able to see that the invoice has been submitted. Uh, at this particular property, I submit my invoices. I'm able to track them. Usually, as soon as I submit them, they're getting processed for payment. I've never really had any problems getting paid from this property. But there is this one particular invoice. It's been sitting saying submitted since January. So the day before yesterday, I reach out to her about this and I say, hey, I'm just trying to find out about this invoice. Can you check on this for me? And she says, did you receive a notification in the last 24 hours about it? I said, no, no, I didn't. I said it was submitted back in January. And she never responds to me after that. Well, yesterday I message her again because I go check on the invoice and it's still saying submitted. And I say, hey, uh, what's the status of this invoice? And she literally responds to me in the email saying, what do you mean what's the status? You gave me the invoice yesterday and I processed it today, which is a lie because it's still sitting there saying submitted. But as soon as she kind of clapped back at me, I clapped back as well. And I said, no, you did not just receive this email. I said, no, you did not just receive this invoice yesterday. You received this back in January. It's been sitting in the system since then. Um, and yes, what is the status? So she says, call me. And I'm like, oh boy, I already know we're about to lose this property. I call her. And she says, hey, I'm trying to understand what the attitude's about. I said, well, I'm trying to find out what's going on with this payment. I said, I messaged you two days ago about this and you never gave me any clarification. Uh, you never even responded to me after your first response. I said, and then I reach out to you today about this. And to be honest, your response was kind of attitude itself. I said, but you know what? Even further than that, I said, I think it's kind of messed up that you guys have basically put us on the back burner at your property, spoon feeding us units at this point. One other thing that I forgot to mention was that uh, when we went to this property recently to paint the first of three units that we had for the month, I had to go into the office to get the keys and I could see their board right there on the wall with all of the units they've got for the month. And it was like 20 of them. I said, you know, I went into the office the last time we were there to get the keys, I know you've got a ton of you know turns going out there. I said, and you're just spoon feeding me units, keeping us on the back burner. Her response to this was, oh geez, I'm sorry you feel like you've been put on the back burner and I'm spoon feeding you units. If you want, you can just go ahead and cancel the rest of the units we have for the month. And I said, you know what? No skin off of my back. I said, um, if it were me, I would at least have told me something. You know, that's not the way that I would do business. We've been there with you for over two and a half years. We've done everything that you've ever needed. We've always been there. 
and you know, this is how you do us. And she says, well, thank you for the business advice. Goodbye. Uh, I did get one last word in. I did say, you know, I want to say one other thing. You are not an easy person to work with. Um, and then she hung up on me and we lost that property. <laughs> and that was really the last property that we had left. Uh, interestingly enough, right after I get off the phone with her about that and I'm feeling defeated, I'm looking at my son in his face, feeling like an absolute failure in business. I get an email from the place that I'm at right here. This is a property that we've worked with for maybe about a year, a property that has since stopped using us, but they find themselves in a situation right now where they've got five units they need painted and they reach out and ask us if we want to paint these. And I say, absolutely. So uh, that's where we are right now. I'm going to stop filming. I've got to go get my guys situated because uh, they're going to be showing up soon. I've got a new property I'm beginning to work with today. And I've also got another little small job that we got to get to. But I am going to be filming throughout the course of today. I want to be able to share with you guys uh, this journey because it has been nothing short of a roller coaster. Uh, best way I can put it. You know, this thing has been insane. But... I appreciate you guys letting me share and I'm going to look forward to doing so in just a little bit. All right. It's about 10 in the morning. It might be a little bit later than that. And we're at our brand new property that we actually just started working at today. And I want to give you an idea of the type of stuff that we do prior to painting when we come into a unit. And if you see all this little bit of drywall work or mud work actually, all around up here. And they had some LED light strips in this room, actually in both bedrooms in this apartment. And they had been painted over a million times. And we came in here and mudded over them. Well, the the remnants of what those wore. Uh, stress crack right there we addressed. And stress crack right there we addressed. And in this other bedroom, same situation. So you can see, we come in here and we prep these things as much as they need to be. Even if it's old repair work, if it doesn't look good, we like to try to clean it up and make it look better. Um, you can see remnants of another painter who's been in here who is actually taped up over that sprinkler head right there. But I want to show you something that I made the maintenance man aware of. And it's something you have to do in this apartment game, especially if you look at this sprinkler head and all of the sprinkler heads actually look like this. Uh, that thing has already been painted over a lot. So we like to let them know, hey, look, this is what we're walking into. We note that. And on our first invoice, we actually say, you know, prior to us coming in and beginning to paint, you know, we discussed with the maintenance personnel that sprinkler heads have previously been painted over. Uh, that way that kind of protects us whenever they do their sprinkler head inspections, which they do at least once a year, because if you paint over them, it's $150 per sprinkler head. And imagine if you've done an, an entire apartment complex, I've heard a horror story of a painter who got charged $16,000 for sprinkler heads. So we're finishing to get this thing prepped. Uh, this is again, a new property that we began at today. It's all one color. So we got white walls, same color on the ceilings and white semi-gloss paint is supposed to be on the trim. But whoever's been painting in here previous, uh, this doesn't look as bad as some of the trim where it is actually flat paint. I gotta take this call. Countertops. 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 Hey there. <clears throat> 
It is about uh, 12, 15 in the afternoon and I'm just getting over to another property. Let's see, this morning I shared with you guys two properties and then I went to a third property that I didn't film anything over at. It was an occupied unit um, that we had to do some repair work in and prime and paint a couple of spots in the ceiling. But to be honest with you, this unit needed a ton of work. A couple of pictures that I took uh, while we were over there, I'll share with you right here. Nothing spectacular that we were doing. It was for an inspection. Uh, this unit had to get inspected, I think on Monday. So this property called me out of the blue, I've never done work with them before. It's a company that we have done a lot of work with at a lot of different properties. And all of those properties have slowly dropped us over pricing. But I go into the office over there and <clears throat> the lady's telling me what we need to go in there and do. There was um, some metal showing on a corner leading into a kitchen that we had to drywall uh, patch and then a couple of spots in the ceiling that just needed to be primed and painted. But I was telling the lady there, I said, hey, you seen that you called us yesterday and we're here today. And she tells me, she says, yeah, you know, I was trying to get in contact with this other guy for a long time and I couldn't get in contact with him. So I called you. And that just made me feel real special. I just got to tell you. Uh, but that's the way that it's been going as of late. You know, properties only call us when they're in a crunch for example, the first property that I shared with you guys this morning, you know, we used to paint for them all the time. Well, they started doing in-house painting, uh, basically having their maintenance guys go in there and do the painting. And uh, I'll show you this picture right here of one of the units that I walked into that the maintenance guys had painted. And basically what they do is they just go in there and slap some paint on the wall, touch it up. It doesn't look good. It doesn't really match. I don't know if you can see it in this picture um, but you know, that was one of the units they wanted us to paint. And that was the standard after they stopped using us. It was obviously cheaper for them to have the painting done in house, but these are your maintenance guys. These are the guys who are supposed to be turning units and doing work orders. And you know, when they're having to paint units, uh, they probably get burnt out and that's why they all quit. And you know, over the course of time that I worked with that property, I saw two or three different maintenance guys over there and the last guy just quit on Tuesday. And that's the reason why they called us yesterday uh, with five units to paint and even messaged me today with three additional units that need drywall work. I said, hey, look, you know, it's Friday. Earliest we can get to those is next week. It seems like we've got a bunch of work today, but this is not the norm. We haven't had days like this for three months and it feels good to be getting this work. But again, these folks only call us when they absolutely need us. Now I'm over at a fourth property right here. And this is a property that we've worked with for a long time. Uh, they've gone through other painters as well, but I don't want to say anything um, out of the way about this place. I do like these folks over here. These are really good folks. And I don't dislike any of the folks that we work with, but it does suck when you lose the work to a cheaper guy. And it's happened over here too. It certainly has happened over here as well, but they like me here. And I think that's the better way to word it. Uh, forget, you know, who I like or dislike. It's who likes me. And like I shared the story with you guys earlier today about the nasty lady with the nasty attitude who fired me yesterday uh, after only giving me three units for the month and all of that. Um, she certainly didn't like me. But anyways, okay, so enough of all of that. So I get called about this unit today. This is going to be some weekend work for us. And this property has also stopped using us for their regular paints uh, because they do have somebody who can do it cheaper, but they do still call me and they do still give me a fair amount of work over here. And for that, I'm appreciative. And you know, what they call me for are the units that need more than just painting. If we look around in here, uh, one thing that they want to do is they want to get countertops done here. 
I, I gave them a quote for countertops and that quote was $1,900. It's about $650 in materials and then it's $1,250 for labor. We got to disconnect the sink. We got to pull the sink. Uh, that's a can of worms right there. Uh, put in our little side splashes, make this stuff better than what it looks like right now. But the real issue is none of this, none of this is hard. Cut out for the sink. Um, cut these pieces for the rest of the kitchen. There's no 45s in here. There's no angles. Uh, but this bar top is the issue. And this is not um, this is not an easy thing to do. And really, this should get factory made. I do have a countertop place that I use for factory uh, for custom countertops. This would be a custom piece right here. But the problem is their lead time is two weeks, at least two weeks. When I gave these folks a quote for countertops in another unit, same price, $1,900. Uh, this one would actually be more because they need bathrooms done, bathroom vanities done in here. Let's look at those. I haven't even seen those yet. Yeah, so they want to do the bathroom vanities as well to match. Um, to match. Hey, Joe. Huh. It certainly feels like a Joe does stuff type of video here. Uh, forgive me for that. I've been wanting... I've been wanting to film and I've been wanting to share with you guys what's been going on with this after business show feeling type of a situation. Today doesn't feel so bad, but most other days absolutely does. Who knows? Maybe we're on the come up. Um, I can tell you this. Yeah, we've got all this work today, uh, but next week we have picked up a couple of little jobs, but my book for March is is bare. Uh, there is not much on my calendar. Um, talking about countertops. Okay, so boom. I gave him the quote for $1,900. I said, hey, look, I can use a color called ice white. Ice white is my color scheme. And the reason is because I can get ice white very easily. And I've also got sheets of laminate in ice white. So I can build this build a new one of these because this one, you know, there's no saving this one. In the other unit, the bar top was salvageable so we could just resurface it with that ice white laminate sheet. Can't do that in here. This one would have to be popped off and, and completely rebuilt, which is no big deal. But they don't want ice white. They want black countertops and black uh, or the, I can't remember what the color is, um, but those countertops are not easily found. When I gave them the quote for these, they told me uh, they received the quote and that they were going to get another quote. And I knew who they were getting the other quote from. And that's a company that I know may or may not be cheaper than me, but it's the same issue that they're running into with them as well. Uh, that company, they got to wait to get the countertops. They came out and did measurements yesterday and they still haven't even gotten the quote yet. I gave him the quote the other day and said, hey, we could do these countertops tomorrow if you go with the ice white. If they want the black, I can probably find um, the countertops. What's going on with that? Um, but can I find the, the bar top and, or you know, find the laminate sheets of that. I'd probably have to wait 10 days or a week at the least to be able to um, get the laminate sheets. Anyway, sorry, I know this is boring. Um, I do apologize for that. I wanna go back to something that I was mentioning earlier today, and that is my thankfulness for this warm embrace and welcome that you guys have shown for me since my return. Not only have I seen so many thoughtful and really kind comments. I'm not used to that, to be honest. Um, not all the time, at least. I've had so many people who have reached out to me, whether it's via messenger or via a text message or via an email and just have offered me, you know, insight and advice and encouragement. And I've gotten a chance to talk to a handful of people and it's awesome being able to network kind of, or, you know, bond. Um, I don't know if bond's the right word, but 
it's just awesome to be able to hear what you guys are saying, see the support that I still receive, 10 years separated from where I've been at, and I can't thank you enough. You know, to all those who have reached out, to all those who have left amazing, awesome, kind, encouraging comments, thank you guys so much. It means a lot. I've done a lot of thinking about what I'm doing with my return to After Prison Show, and I know this ain't probably the type of video you really want to see, like me scrambling around and working. It was what was going on over on Joe Does Stuff. I was doing a lot of that, and that's not really what I want to be doing. I want to be filming videos that you guys want to rock with. I've had a bunch of ideas for what I could do with my return. Um, you know, potentially going back to showcasing stories and sharing those with you. And maybe I do that. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and I was thinking to myself and, and talking with them about this. Maybe we could do an after prison show series of success stories. I'm, he I'm sitting here talking about the after business show and how I'm a failure in business and how I suck at this. But there's plenty of people who come home after prison and do it right. I've heard of a guy right now, as a matter of fact, I just got in contact with a guy that I was locked up with telling me about another guy that we were locked up with who was running a super successful business. Man, that's awesome. I, I wish I could be in, in, in that conversation as well. But not everything that you try is gonna, is gonna succeed, so whatever. And who knows, maybe this picks back up or maybe I'm just really flailing and, and you know flapping my arms right this second. But I wanna create content that you guys enjoy and you know, thanks for allowing me to share today. Um, here's some other stuff in this unit. Uh, we got some ceiling repairs we gotta do. Looks like that vent's coming down. Uh, yeah, so. We're gonna be painting this one. Carpet's going, flooring's going, so cool deal. I just needed to come over here and check this. I'm gonna to go to uh, a place called They have countertops there. I'm gonna go see if they've got these kind of countertops that they're looking for, and then see how long it would take me to get the sheets of this material in case we have to build a bar top. But one thing's for certain, today, it's a hell of a lot better day than it's been for the last three months. Um, I'm very fortunate for that. This new property that we picked up <clears throat> that I was sharing with you earlier, that's a way better property with a little bit of a better price point than those numbers I shared with you guys earlier in this video. And those type of properties are not a common thing. Uh, the, the running consensus in apartment painting is bottom of the barrel and cheapest. You know, 250, 200 to paint a unit, 300 most, maybe 350. You know, people want this stuff done for next to nothing. But painting an apartment is not that different from painting a house. It's a ton of work. You see what we got going on in here. Um, these things can be massive and they take time to get done. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. My hope is I can go to the countertop store. I can look and see if they have the countertops that we need to potentially do countertops at this property. It's not even a guarantee that they go with me. My price could be too high. But one thing that I'm trying to learn is you got to bid this stuff accordingly. You cannot just go in and do it for the cheapest because that's what they want. You have got to you got to bid this stuff at a reasonable, respectable price. And maybe for two and a half years, that's been part of my problem and why I find myself in the situation that I currently am, currently am, uh, feeling like this thing is a big old fail. But thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you so much for this warm embrace and welcome back. I hope some kind of a way this is a video you guys enjoy and, and want to check out. And it's my hope to be able to upload videos like every other day, maybe three times a week, something like that. I'm not going to overload y'all with videos. I want to focus on good videos. Not really sure this was one of those. Maybe you enjoyed the stories I shared with you. Regardless, let me know what you guys think of 
everything that I shared with y'all today. And I will look forward to sharing more with you just as soon as I possibly can. Have a great one. And I'll talk with you again real soon. Take care.